Thanks for tuning in live to Toronto Business Summit, the largest business marketing event in Canada. And now your host, Max Carter. Hey everyone, uh, thank you for tuning in today. We're joined by Matt Pilotti. Uh, he's a product manager at Drift. And Drift is a messaging app for, um, for sales and customer service. So go check it out at drift.com. Hey Matt, how are you? Hey, good, how are you Max? I'm, I'm excellent today. Um, so the biggest, well, not the biggest, but a big um, thing for small businesses is customer service, is dealing with, with um, customers, uh, answering those questions, um, turning those visitors into um, actual buyers. So Matt, um, let's dive in into the maybe some mistakes business owners make when, when it comes to customer service ways they can improve and then how Drift uh, can help those those struggling business owners with customer service. Sure, happy to, happy happy to talk, talk about it. it. Thanks for having me. Yep. Um, so yeah, as, as Max said, uh, customer service is one of the core tenets of a, of a successful business. You need to be able to offer good experiences in order to get people engaged and to consider to buy. And then once they buy and they're happy customers, then they buy more and so on and so forth. So it's a very, very fundamental piece of everything. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure uh, all of us at one point have had bad experiences with customer service. You know, you bought something and it didn't work and then you reached out and then you got a very inhuman response or you felt like, the issue that you had wasn't resolved or, or things like that. So we, we've kind of been on both sides of this table. And so I think one of the one of the most important things that sometimes companies miss, sometimes really big successful companies miss the mark on this, uh, sometimes smaller businesses miss the mark on this, um, but sometimes uh, it feels like support uh, or customer service feels like this like secondary problematic thing that you just have to like spend your time and spend your money on. So you kind of just want to like get through stuff. Um, when really fundamentally it's like one of the most important things that you could be doing and spending your time on. And I, I think coming off as robotic uh, in, in one way or another is a, a downfall in, in a lot of ways because uh, you know, your customer on the other end, if they don't feel like they're talking to a person, uh, then, you know, they're more likely to go somewhere else that maybe has a more friendly brand uh, or it's just more welcoming or there's a person there and they get to that person's face and they use their name and that kind of thing. Uh, and so I think just being as human as possible, like talking to these people as if they're your friend, just casually explaining stuff. Uh, I think a lot of the time people try to create cookie cutter answers to things. Sometimes too soon. Like if, if you're, you're of a small business and you have 100 customers and maybe you're having uh, a couple conversations a day or a few conversations a week with, with potential customers, uh, that's not necessarily the time that you want to start writing out, you know, when a customer says this, give them this, you know, these 10 sentence uh, explanations. And then when they respond to this, give them this thing, uh, because that's your opportunity to like really engage and really have conversations, uh, especially because one, then on the other side of that conversation, they feel like, oh, this person's listening. We're having an engaging conversation. They're willing to hear me out uh, on your side of things. Not only are you helping them get their answers resolved, uh, but you get to take the conversation where you want it to go. So someone has a problem with your product, not just, oh, here's a refund or here I'll send you a replacement. Anyone can do that. But uh, where you can really win and drive a lot of value and learn a lot is to say, oh, you had a problem with the product and you want a replacement. Well, what was wrong? Like, What didn't meet your expectations? Why wasn't this right for you? What, what did you feel like could have been better? Because then you take all that stuff and then you feed that, that uh, knowledge and feedback that you get back into your, into your product and your service to improve it. So uh, when, when you're smaller uh, and, and you're trying to make it as a, as a business, this stuff is critically important because the more uh, you're in tune with your customers, the more likely you are, you are to beat out all the other businesses out there that aren't in tune with their business because you know they just want to get through stuff and they're looking at their spreadsheets and their income and that kind of thing. And, and while that stuff is 
absolutely fundamentally critical, uh, you need to make sure that you're also having these conversations and learning so that way you can continue, instead of just moving along on this path of growth, you can take step functions. So each time you learn something uh, really important new about your product or service through these conversations, you can move up a level and another level and another level, and this stuff just pays dividends over time. So uh, I think that's some of the, the most important aspects of that there. Uh, I think another another thing is some companies, because you know customer service uh, might feel like this extra thing that takes away from your time to focus on the business. Uh, sometimes it's hard. You go to you go to a website and you're looking for a contact link or a phone number or an email, uh, and you have to fill out these long forms, and uh, and it's just really hard to just reach out to someone and say, hey, I have a question. Um, and now if if we look at just society in general, everyone's plugged in all the time, everyone's using messaging tools, whether it's Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, uh, whatever it might be, everyone's using messaging one way or another, uh, which kind of lends itself towards saying, messaging is now a wave that if people want to interact with their friends and family through messaging, uh, they're gonna start to expect to be able to interact with businesses through messaging. Uh, you're not gonna email your friend the way you might have in the late 90s, um, but now, you're gonna send them a message. So the, the websites that have someone accessible through something like live chat messaging uh, are the ones that are gonna be able to stay even closer. So if if we look at you know a high level timeline of the customer interaction cycle and uh, in the world of email, or say you have a form on your website, you have a contactless form on your website. Uh, someone has to go to your website and then they reach out. And then a day goes by and then maybe you get around to the email and then you respond and then they're busy so they don't get back for a day and a half. And then you have two or three back and forths and then at this point we're looking at a week. And uh, hopefully you learn something from that conversation that uh, influences what you do in the future as a business, but that took a week, right? Uh, However, if you have something like live chat on your website, you condense all of that conversation and all that learning into 10 minutes. And not only are you condensing it to save yourself the time of, of having to go back and forth, uh, but you're also getting that person there when they care about the thing the most, right? They care enough to say something like, hi, or I have a question. And three days later, they're gonna be busy with their children and, and you know family, and they're not gonna be thinking about your product or service anymore. So to capture them in that moment is critically important. And if you think about a business, say you have, uh, you have two businesses, business A is using these forms and email, uh, and business B is using live chat. If business A is uh, improving uh, one point for every conversation, uh, and then each conversation, say, takes a week on average, then in a year they're improving 52 times, 52 points. Uh, but if you have a live chat uh, and those conversations take 10 minutes, and maybe you have more of them, uh, or even if you have the same amount of them, you can have that same amount of conversations in like three weeks. Uh, and so if, if you consider you know, how fast can this company move, company A move versus company B, company B is gonna be able to change a lot quicker, move a lot faster, uh, have those conversations more often, and those are the conversations that result in those customers telling their friends about the service and so on and so forth. So uh, that's, you know, our fundamental view at Drift. So we build uh, live chat and messaging tools for businesses to talk to their customers. There's a totally free plan, so anyone can just go and install it on their website. We have plenty of small business owners using it. Uh, and in addition, we have a paid plan and we have an enterprise plan for uh, companies who have full sales teams or maybe one or two salespeople uh, or customer success teams. And so uh, we kind of offer the whole gambit there, but, um, but yeah, fundamentally, we we believe live chat and messaging is the way of the future. Uh, like I said before, everyone all day long is using messaging in one way or another. If you look at all the social media apps, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, they all have live chat. They all have messaging. It's all like a core way that these products work because everyone's recognizing, oh, this is the way of the future. This is the way that people are communicating, uh, and it's super important for smaller, younger, startup type businesses to catch on to that wave soon uh, before they spend a year realizing that they had 52 conversations when they could have had a lot more. So uh, yeah, that's kind of my spiel on that. I don't know if there's any other points that uh, would be good to talk about. I, I think it's even that, uh, as you said, 
it's it's great to engage the customer at that time when they really want to want to tell you something and it's really good actually when when a customer is happy as well as when they're kind of disappointed or have a problem with your product instead of them mm -hmm. having difficulty to get to your customer support team and they just go to Yelp or they just go somewhere else yeah. and post a review here they they kind of get the feedback right away yeah that's super important because then they feel like they have an outlet to, to talk to you about something rather than, yeah, they, right, then they go right to Yelp. If they can't reach you, uh, they go right to Yelp. And some of the happiest customers that I've ever interacted with, so I've done like uh, customer success, sales, customer support stuff, product stuff for years now. And some of the happiest customers that I've ever interacted with started off as the angriest customers. They showed up and they were mad about something. Uh, and all it really took was me or someone else on my team to be there, to listen to them, to, to understand what they're saying and actually uh, hear it, acknowledge it, and act on it, rather than just saying like, oh, this is an angry person, we're not gonna make, make them happy. Um, it's worth spending the time with those people because those are the ones who care enough to be angry and to say something, so you want to capitalize on that to hear what they have to say, talk through it with them, and ultimately, a lot of the time, uh, if those conversations uh, go well and you're spending the time listening, uh, they turn out to be very happy people. Then they go, I, you know, I've had people show up yelling, <laughs> yelling at us about something, and then we talk to them for a little bit, and then at the end, they go tweet about how great our customer service is, and it's crazy. You don't think that you can turn someone around like that, um, but you really can take the angriest people and turn them into the, those promoters. And it's way better to give someone a way to reach out to you rather than make them feel like they have no outlet, they have no way to say this. The only way that they have to say this is by posting a review or something along those lines. And I, I know a lot of people are thinking right now, oh, well, I need a dedicated person for this or I can't be on the phone all the time. Um, my my one of the favorite features in Drift is the follow up kind of message that that comes after the original message. They they can leave the email for a follow up, and it's 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 great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we don't have a single full time support type person here. Uh, even when I joined, we were uh, ten people. And we didn't have a single support person. We were all kind of doing it, right? We all want to stay close to the customer. Uh, and especially it's, it's beneficial if everyone's answering these conversations because then they're talking to customers, they're hearing things right from them. And then you don't have this one person running around trying to say, hey, these people are angry about this or hey, we need to improve this. Everyone just hears that right from the customer, so everyone stays more in tune. Everyone's willing to put in the time to make updates and, and to improve the service, improve the product. Um, and it really isn't it isn't that much of a of a time investment. And we have, uh, you know, uh, I've seen plenty of companies that say, "Hey, I'm not having enough chats," uh, which is why we offer things like triggered messages. So when someone automatically uh, when someone goes to a certain page on your website you can have a message automatically pop up to encourage more conversations and then we have plenty of people who are also saying that I'm getting too many chats I can't handle this uh, which is why we built things to say you know only offer live chat on this certain page or only to certain people who meet a, a specific criteria do so you have ways to like control that stuff and we also have mobile apps so we have everyone in our company answering live chats that come in and we have people on public transit uh, in the morning who have their app open and they're talking to customers and they come in and they're like, hey, I just closed the deal. Uh, or hey, you know, this person's super happy, they tweeted about us. Uh, and those are the things that really matter, uh, especially in this day where people expect a lot more for less in a lot of ways. We've shifted to this world that uh, every mobile app or most of the mobile apps on your phone are free to start with and all these services and products have uh, free trials, free samples, whatever it might be. Um, so people's expectations have gone up uh, and their way of talking to people has changed over to messaging. Uh, so it's it's just super important to stay in tune with that. And um, did you notice any um, increase in, in, in lead generation or kind of direct um, sales increase over, over having a live chat? Yeah, absolutely. So... Um, a, a very high level formula would be, 
you know, we can have a salesperson send 300 cold emails to people that we think might be good leads. Uh, and they're spending all this time sending those emails, going back and forth, so on and so forth, and say uh, three of those converts, convert into customers. So we have a 1% uh, conversion rate. Whereas when we switch over to live chat, say we have 30 chats because people write into us when they're interested, when they have questions, and that converts into five customers. So, or even if it converts into three customers because those people are more qualified, um, they have better questions, they already know a bunch about the, about the product or the service. So, you know, if you have a 1% one, 1 conversion uh, on cold email outreach and a 10% type conversion on live chat, that those numbers really matter. They really add up. And when we switch over to live chat, we see it all the time. Uh, you know, if uh, I make up a number, say we close, we have a uh, hundred new customers uh, in a month. We can say that you know, seventy of them just come through live chat. Uh, and I don't, I don't know the actual numbers. Um, kind of just making those up as easy benchmarks. Uh, but if we didn't have live chat, then we wouldn't have that channel for people to show up and say, I want to buy this. Can you explain your pricing? That's sort of thing. So there's absolutely been a, a shift in conversion rate when we moved over to live chat. All right, just to wrap this up, uh, Matt, what do you think some of the maybe tips, ways um, people can improve their customer service on maybe on the live chat and in general? Yeah, uh, so I would say be human. Um, be available, listen, uh, and don't don't try to create process around stuff too early. Uh, I, like I said before, I know it's easy to say, well, when, I, when people have a problem, just give them a refund or uh, have them send the product back and then we'll ship them back another one. Uh, it, it's really easy to kind of default to that stuff early, but in the, in the startup world, a um, man by the name of Paul Graham, uh, who's the founder of Y Combinator, has said, you know, do things that don't scale, and things that don't scale are spending the time to talk to these people that have problems and and understand what those what those issues are, and and like really take action on them, internalize them a lot. Uh, so I would say just spend more time there because that you know you're building your product and your service for these customers, and if you're not spending the time really hearing them out and really listening to them, then you're disconnected and. Uh, as more and more companies become more and more connected through things like live chat, um, those are the ones that are going to win over time. So uh, I would say it might feel like a huge investment uh, to, to move over to something like live chat, but give it a try. Uh, you know, our product has uh, a free version. There's others out there that also have uh, free trials and give them a shot. Uh, see how it can help your business. We have people who have said before, you know, I don't think I could do live chat. It just feels like too much of a time investment. I don't know how to handle it, that kind of thing. And then we convince them to give it a go, and then they show up three days later saying, hey, I just sold $1,000 of business through live chat, and that stuff is really amazing. So uh, I, I would say give it give it a shot um, and, and just try it out and see what the results are. Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you, Matt. So when uh, where can uh, our listeners um, find out more and kind of sign up for the free free uh, plan for the drift. Yeah, uh, so you can just go right to drift.com. Uh, there's a sign up link right there. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm at Matt Bellotti on Twitter. Um, I also write about how we build products at Drift. Uh, I'm a product manager over here, so I have plenty of that stuff on Medium, um, and feel free to reach out with any questions at all. Oh, this was awesome. Thank you, Matt, for joining us today. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, enjoy your day. Bye. You too. Bye.